Hi guys, it's me Tony again. Um, I'm shooting one more video, just one more. I've already had a person come and say that the video that I took, that I just put up to ask for forgiveness, to say I'm sorry about what I did, uh, it's not even good enough. It's like, it's like this whole family is, is like, in a trance that my wife is like the best woman in the world like there's no chance in ever that she could ever do any wrong and she's never wrong I'm the person that's wrong you know and it's it's funny how every person in her family um, that you know she has said multiple times you know that she cares a lot for um, but l let me just say this I made a video to say I'm sorry to everyone and and I, I said it from my heart I don't know any other way without getting on my knees and crying like a baby and having everybody that's involved in this or thinks they're involved or has a piece of it or or is a chismosa or is a person what the Bible says, you know, you know, do not, you know, be a person that talks about other people, you know. Um, I the word has slipped my mind right now. Um, and all I'm saying right now is that I'm sorry to everyone, every person involved. And I try to say that, and, but the problem is, the problem is, is that if, if I, if I say what I want to say, everybody will take it completely the wrong way. They will not look at it or listen to it as the way I'm saying it. Everybody will be will be picking out words that they hear. They hear nothing but a, a big old hum. And then all of a sudden, one word will pop out. And then these five words is what they concentrate on. Not everything from the beginning to the end and stop and think about what I said they just pick out words and then they use those against me it just makes this whole problem keep going on longer and longer and longer you know and I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this right now I met my wife through a picture in a book you know and when I saw her in the book I was at um, uh, from some friend's house that lived in the same complex apartment complex i mean i was a, i was a um a, uh what do you call a um not a manager but a um i was a uh, the guy who fixes things so i got to know some people in in an apartment and and with their three girls and and we you know we we had conversations and then I was invited to, to do go to a Thanksgiving dinner in 1994. I'm sorry, 1993. And uh, in 1993, I went. Uh, I was eating. Carla was there. She was just a little girl. Danny was there. Ruth was there. Um, Lupe was there. Ricardo was there. I was in their house. And, um, you know, they always kept kind of talking about do you have a girlfriend, blah, 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 bringing up multiple times, and, and I just kept saying, no, I'm still looking, but I, I love Latina women, I love, you know, I grew up in blah, 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 my story, so as we were sitting down, they were playing some Christian music, they, they said that they went to a, uh, a church, um, it was called The Door, and, uh, that's where they used to go, and, um, and so I was a Christian also. My, my values and my thoughts and everything that I did was based around just making sure that God, you know, me and, her, me and him had a good relationship. And 
I won't go any back farther than that because it's just really bad for me in my life. I've never been in trouble with the law. Never. It was nothing like that. It was just me making bad decisions with women in general or jobs or whatever. Had to learn stuff from the hard way. So what what I did was I was there and after they you know they were talking and they brought a book out and they showed me a picture of Trini and she was sitting in a car. She was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. She's exactly what I was praying to God for. Um, you know, I looked very good at that time. I don't see the picture handy right now to show you. You guys can see it on my Facebook. It's it's with me, with my wife, and my my daughter Cecilia. And um, you know, I used to have good hair. I was I was, in my opinion, a good looking guy. And so, basically, I was I waited for her. This was in November, mind you. So November, December, January, February. February 10th, she got here. And uh, I was cleaning my car outside. I saw the little boy she brought over with her. And on February 14th, I just kept waiting, and I, I got a dozen roses. The boys were playing basketball, and I asked them to come over. And I told them to give the, the dozen roses to um, her mom, their mom, and ask them if she'll be my valentine. And Martin was the one that was always the outgoing one. He's the one that always came out. And he, they were always smiling. And he said, yeah. He said, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said yes. So they, all three of them ran back upstairs. Because they lived on the second floor. The second floor of the of the apartment building. And uh, then they ran right back downstairs. And, the, and all they said was, yes, yes, come, come. So I was like, okay. So I walked up there and I met her, and up she was putting the flowers in a vase, and we just sat down. I didn't know a lot of Spanish, and she did. From you know, three or four years later, you know, I, I she told me she knows a lot of English. She just doesn't like to speak it. I don't know. I don't know if she's just lazy or just doesn't like to, to speak English. I don't know. Uh, but of course, you know, and and her getting her papers now and stuff, she's been, you know, been talking and speaking a lot of English. So, you know, we we went out for a week. I'm sorry, from Wednesday to Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We didn't go anywhere. I just came over and visited, and then on Sunday, while we were out on a the balcony, there happened to be able to watch planes land and, and take off. She loved that. I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. And it was like a fantasy dream. Um, we went down. Um, first person we told was her sister, Juanita. Because that's where she was living with Juanita and Stanley at the time and the girls. And they, uh, they she kept staying there. And then um, because of... Uh, the people who actually ran the place, there was an old guy, an old Korean woman. This guy was in Korean War. He, I don't know, I guess he brought the Korean woman back that I guess he fell in love with. And, and they've been together ever since. And he was the owner of the car, apartment complex. And she was really, really bothersome. She actually called the police on my wife while well, inside there and stuff, uh, saying that she wasn't supposed to be there. So... Ultimately, about a month later after I met her, we ended up having to move out, and I moved um, in with uh, Lupe and Ricardo and stuff, and that's where some of the pictures that you see of, of my wife in different clothings and, and stuff like that, um, you know, there's pictures of me in there too, um, with the mustache, and, you know, I think back of all of these great times um, at that time, and then we, I walked down the street, and I, these guys were, were remodeling an apartment complex, and I said, do you guys have a manager yet, and he said, no, we're still looking, so I said, well, I need a job really bad, you know, I, I just, you know, got a, a girlfriend with three kids, and I'm, I'm going to be married, and, and I really need a job, so nobody ever applied, 
so you know the next day he said yeah he got the job so um we moved in like without within a week or two of it was about a week that i was staying over at lupe's uh sleeping on the floor um i got up and we got went over there and we moved in like within a week so i worked there for almost um well well for the for the next four or five months uh we, we prepared everything i saved my money from that job and I sent my my wife back to Mexico to get a divorce. Some bad things happened there, which I won't talk about. But she came back safe. And that following Sunday that she came back, we got married. Because I knew that I had the girl that I wanted. And I didn't want to lose her to being what I call Americanized. You know, finding out, you know, that there's, there's women that just... You know, say, oh, we can go to this, go to Chippendales, we can go drinking, we can go get drunk. You know, I mean, that's all the women I had in my life. I had beautiful women in my life that that's all they did on me was cheat, you know, because I was a nice guy and I would forgive them and I would move on. And it's a long story about that stuff. But, you know, for the first couple of years of my life, my marriage was really great. And so I made a really bad decision to move to New Mexico because a guy named Orly, Orlando Coca, which owned a magazine called Orly's Lowrider Magazine, he hired me. He flew me out there uh, to see what's going on. He needed somebody to help get his magazine quality back, you know, up using filters and plugins and stuff that um, Lowrider Magazine had, the paper quality. <coughs> etc <coughs> stuff like that because the, the his magazine was just really made the quality of it was really lower than lowrider magazine lowrider magazine was like real shiny really really just everything was really 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 good quality so i was there for about two months and i got everything up i got everything up to par i replaced all the computers uh, i fixed all the computers that they could use and i sold all the rest of them in an auction and basically, I just saw myself out of a job. And then it just became real hard and really hard after that. I mean, we, we ended up, um, you know, there was an amnesty there at that time um, that happened in, I think, 1997. And it was like $2,000, but because I lost my job, I had no job, I had no money, I had no way to pay for that. There's been several times I was able to get my wife's papers, but I wasn't able to do it. And ultimately, uh, in 2000, I believe, 2000, 2001, we, we, it was right around 2000, we had to move. Because it was right after 9-11, and that was in 2000, so it was 2001, because we moved um, after that. So... And when we moved back to Arizona, good things started happening. You know, I moved in with Carla and Israel. We got a, a little apartment, and then they moved to a two-bedroom. And then that, that's when I found out, you know, some jobs and some work. And I finally was able to get out of their house and go to a little tiny apartment on Patchoon Rule. And then I moved from there to an apartment on a, a actually condominium on a lake. A real gigantic lake. It was a beautiful, beautiful place right across from Metro Mall and up in, in Phoenix. And then we moved from there uh, to Northern, which was a five bedroom big gigantic house with a pool in the back. Um, just the, that was a, one of the best houses. I, I wish I just would have stayed in that house. It was the best house I ever had. Uh, I did move closer to my church, Rock Church at the time. Uh, and I want to reiterate that uh, it, it did sound like on the other video that that they didn't do nothing for me, or, or I don't know what it sounded like, but Rock Church always helped me. Omar has been my best friend, um, and when they, when I guess there's some stuff that happened at the church that broke it ap apart that I don't want to talk about, none of my business, I wasn't here. But the new church, OCC, Abraham and um, Damaris, they really opened up their heart to me. They helped me tremendously. And uh, they were such a blessing. They did more than I could ever expect that a church could even really do, honestly. 
and um, and things were going good, but it was it was a time where I went in. Me and my wife were having the best marriage of our life in 2011. It was April, April, May, June, July, about four or five months. I got a navigator. We started going out to eat. We finally got a car. We were able to go out to be alone. We were able to be, you know, just talk about us and and be like girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, just cuddle, you know, just, just be in love, you know, just do stuff that people love, you know, um, and show emotions and talk about stuff and, and, and the future and where do we see ourselves in five years, that kind of stuff. And... We had the best time until August 4th, which was my wife's first court date to get her papers, which she got. But that day, I started, my tumor started to bleed so bad, um, it was bleeding for hours. And it was so bad. I won't go into details. But all I know is I ended up in the ICU. Um, and the next day, the lady had told me um, that if I would have came in, you know, two one or two hours later I would have died because I had lost so much blood um, that there's no way they could have got it back in me fast enough because at that time I didn't have my my direct port which is right here you can see this little rubby thing right here that's my direct port they have real long long needles that are real thick they go inside the port here and it goes right into a main vein into my body so if they had that at that time, then that would have saved my life. But they had to put it in my, in through my, you know, my arm, you know, which only could take so much before, you know, you would end up bursting the vein. So I went through a lot in my life at that time. And, you know, I know that my wife had to deal with stuff and, and my family had to deal with stuff and... It was just really, really bad, you know, of kids not going to school. I had to go to, to court, you know, for six months, not knowing if I was going to be put in jail because my kids just didn't want to go to, go to school. And then, I, I'm, you know, and I don't want to talk about, the you know, who blame who and blame me for not going to school and it's all my fault, it's all your fault. And I don't want to go into that. All I want to go into is that there's a lot of stuff here that's happened in my family and I really want to make this you know really really uh, clear to everybody that there's so much that no matter how close you are to us you honestly don't really know the whole story and and until you've actually lived in this house 24 hours a day for let's just say six months you would never understand the stuff that happens. If you were to ask Anna the truth about really what's happening here, she'll tell you the truth. Monica will tell you the truth. Ceci will tell you the truth. My wife will tell you the truth, honestly, if she gets if you get her alone. But this the situation is that I'm doing this video because I want to give credit where credit is due. That my wife is a great wife, that we've had a great marriage, I believe throughout our 20 years and in January 4th, uh, January 14th of next year will be it'll be 20 years for us being married and I just want to say from my heart that I love her and I love my kids and as you can see my eyes have been crying all this morning you know, I'm not doing this because I want people to feel sorry for me. I'm not putting these videos up. I'm trying to put these videos up so that people could see that that I'm not the same person I used to be. I'm not that Tony of five, six, ten years ago that people knew. God has taught me so much, and I have opened up to my wife, and I've told her every secret that only between me and God knew. You know, stupid stuff, you know, stuff that you would never tell anybody, but I've, I wiped my slate clean with her two years ago when I first started my, my, my cancer treatments because I really wanted her to know everything and I did not want the devil to have anything on me to just be able to use against me. And 
you know, all of this stuff that we're going through, that my wife being mad about what I said on, on Facebook and, 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 you know, after, you know, like a week of thinking about what I said, you know, what I said was my heart, but I didn't need to say it to, you know, 800 strangers out of the people that I have on there. There's a lot of people who don't know me and there's a lot of people who do. And even the people that do know me still didn't need to know the what was going on. But I think I just got tired of of my wife being able to come in a room, lock the door, and treat me however she felt at the time using emotions and saying things that she shouldn't have said that hurt me and depressed me very bad. And I just took it because I know that that's not her. I know that something else is happening, and I know that um, that she doesn't mean it because, you know, two or three days later we would end up, you know, talking about it and working it out. But, you know, we have talked about and worked it out a lot of times. But the problem is, you know, you know eight months ago after my throat, my throat, it's just there's reasons and explanations as to the things that I've done in the last two years because of what I've been going through with uh, trying to raise $2,400 to pay my, my payment in my house. And I'm trying to do that all by myself uh, since my wife wasn't able to work yet. Uh, my kids weren't as of age or they were, but, you know, jobs are real hard to find. And um, I was the only one that could do it on top of fighting cancer so I couldn't talk it you know even sometimes nowadays it's very hard to talk but I, I just wanted to say in this video that whatever was misunderstood in my other video or what I typed out or, or anything that I've said it's it's all from my heart I love every every person in my in my life um, yeah, we all do things wrong. We we all make a lot of mistakes. But the mistake that I've done, I don't feel that after looking at it rationally, that I I should be punished or disciplined, if you will, or or I don't know what's happening right now, but um, me and my wife are. Are, are going through some really, really, really tough times. And it's coming to a point where, where you know, some st stuff has been said, and I won't go into it again. I won't want to get trouble. But, you know, all I do is love her. I love her, and I, I just want to say to everybody that I love my wife. I've never done anything to hurt her. All I've ever done was stuff to, to just give her a good life. And, but, you know, 17 years later, she tells me, well, I really, I really didn't care about how good a life I had. I just wanted you. And that hurt, hurt a lot because I realized what she said. And I realized, hang on, I can't see, I've got tears in my eyes. I I realized that a lot of stuff that she said made a lot of sense now, where 10 years ago it wouldn't have. You know, I, I, I just went to work, two or three jobs, three jobs, four jobs. You know, as a person living in a, in a cockroach-infested apartment in Phoenix, you know, um, being sick all the time, not having no, really, any kind of money to do anything with, you know, it, it makes you want to change. It makes you want to go higher. You know, and get your family out of this poverty state, you know. And I just took it too far. I, I just I just worked too hard. I worked too hard. I worked too long of hours. I didn't, I didn't actually, you know, do the things that I was supposed to do. And, and I ended up, uh, you know, ruining, I guess, in a way, ruining my marriage. But, 
if if anybody who really, really, really understood the situation would understand that my wife and me both brought baggage into our 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 marriage, and that baggage has been there all this time. And I know the devil has a lot to do with this. I know that he has has got our marriage onto a, a you know a hair. You know, but they're still hanging on. I'm hanging on. I'm not leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for her, and and I will keep fighting until, you know. And I, I'm praying for her. I'm fighting the devil off of her, off of the decisions and the way that her mind is working right now. Um, and I'm, when my mind's working right now, I'm I'm looking at myself too, and I'm doing the things that I really believe that God is telling me to do with, with my wife and my children and myself. You know, I know that I can't go back and, and fix what's broke, but I can change and go forward from this day. And, you know, I know my relationship with my wife has been up and down, up and down. One day she'll be loving me and and she'll be, you know, putting her hand on mine when she goes to sleep and and then and then 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 a couple of days later something happens it's either i discipline christian my son about something and because of our silly little argument my wife gets upset and then you know she just doesn't know how to not be upset no more so her only way of dealing with it is just being quiet and going to work, and I pray so that, you know, that God or somebody can, you know, talk with her and and tell her, you know, you know, everything that you've been through, you have a 20-year 20 20-year marriage, and it's like, I know that it's not simple. I say it's very simple just to fix the marriage because all we got to do is talk, but I know it's a lot more than that. I know that we probably need counseling, um, and I'm ready for whatever I've got to do to fix this. And and I'm just saying that right now, I love my wife with all my heart, and I never intended to get sick. I never intended to get cancer, um, but I see a lot of things that I did wrong, a lot. And like I said, I can't go back and fix it, but I can change from today forward. But I can change. But if she's not ready to go forward, then we're still at the standstill. So all I'm saying right now, and that what I really wanted to say is just that um, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that, um, you know, there's been a lot of people here that's helped me. Many, many, many people. Many. Everybody in my family, friends. A um, lot of people have really, really spent time with me. And and I want to apologize to them too. You know, Robert and and um, um, Charles and Abraham and his wife, Damaris, and... And and Tina and Joseph and Omar and uh, oh my gosh half the half the church of Oasis, um, Israel, Carla, um, Danny, um, my whole family actually that's on my wife's side. A lot of people tried to help me, you know, but when you go through cancer, it's one of those things where. It's hard to explain because you've never had cancer. So, you know, all you have to do is talk to a doctor or a counselor and ask them, you know, you know, this guy that we know that's part of our family, you know, we want to help him, but he's just, it's just really hard to help him because he's either stubborn or, or we don't really understand. And they'll tell you that there's no way that you'll ever be able to understand a, a, a person that's going through cancer or that's going through, you know, a part of their lives that unless you've went through it, you will never understand really truly what they're going through. 
And I think that that has been the biggest problem because I've been expecting people to be a certain way with me and they they were never that way. They they weren't the way that I expected. And and I don't know if that was if that was deliberate or if it was um, I don't know. I don't think it was deliberate. I just think that it was just people don't really understand someone's relationship, especially with me and my wife, what we've been through, all of the ups and downs. We were extremely poor when we met for three years. We walked everywhere, and then I got a car. We started doing things better. My life has just gotten better and better each year, but there's been a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of problems you know not with me and my wife and my kids but with jobs money you know stress like that and and it's been a very very hard road and i don't want to say i threw all of that away because of a misunderstanding with my wife or words that were said that were misunderstood or misconstrued or twisted because the devil likes to twist stuff around and if a person doesn't understand English, like I said in my other video about the, you know, the word that I said there, I mean, it, I could say, I could write something down, or I could say something, and if a person doesn't understand all of English, or at least enough, or all of Spanish, or enough, you know, what I do with my wife, I don't understand everything she says all the time. I just... Most times she says it to me in a way that I'll understand all of it. But sometimes there's a word that pops up that I don't understand, and I just start piecing, piecing stuff together, and then I, I understand. But, you know, if you're, or if, you're in a, if you're using emotions in your life to run your life, emotions, emotions are the baddest. It's the worst time to make a decision, as I've learned throughout all my life, is the worst time to make a decision is when you are emotional because your emotion is, is what running your decision making instead of sitting down you know going over what what you're what you're trying to do think about it you know get the emotions away however long it takes away for the emotions to go away or go and sit down with you know some really really close friends tell them what's going on get that out of you and say that you want to make this decision and then you could get better the more people that you talk to and the more the more precise and direct and the more more detailed of of the decision that you want to make is known people can help you make a better decision and i've learned that because i've made a lot of bad decisions man one of them was moving here to arizona uh, i Either way I look at it, it was it was bad. It was a really, really bad decision. And I I regret it now. I I know that, you know, Omar made what he had said that, that he missed me, that he cried to me at Rock Church when I came out to visit in in, in zero nine in August. On me and my wife's anniversary and he cried and said Dylan there's nobody here to help me take care of the stuff you know you're the only one that could take care of that and and I don't remember exactly what he said but he cried and it, it touched my heart and and I think I think my half of my decision was emotional and half of it was uh, uh, based upon people that I trusted um, that would tell me what they felt and what they thought and what God thought because that was most important what does God think so I think half of it was just the excitement of getting back to see with my old you know Frank and and Ruth and Danny and and um, you know just, just all my family on my wife's side and then friends and people that I know here that I miss that I left but I also left a thriving uh, business in Albuquerque. I had forty thousand dollars sitting on the table that I had to say no to because I left left Albuquerque with four thousand dollars. I got here within two months. I realized this was the worst decision I ever made. I mean, it was 
I just couldn't believe it. And then a few months later, I was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer, base of tongue. It's at the base of the to of your tongue. You get it. Um, it's one of the very rarest types of form of cancer. And but I got through it, and I'm still here, and I'm talking good now because, you know, eight months ago I couldn't talk like this. It was so difficult. My mouth has no saliva glands, so my mouth is very dry. That's why you see me trying to get something on my my mouth because it's real dry, real st sticky and tacky. And I, there's a lot of things that I've had to learn how to overcome. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. I hated talking. Now I love it. Now I'm talking to people. I'm talking to air off like I used to. So there's a lot of stuff that's just changed. There's a lot of stuff that 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 God has shown me that I don't have an opportunity to show my family or my wife simply because the opportunity is not there. You know, getting a job, going back and forth to a job, getting a car, getting money. That's all. Uh, that all it has eluded me for years, and and everything went just like the worst it could be was when I went to the hospital August fourth, two thousand eleven, and since then it it has just been the worst time in my life, and it's because of you know just our circumstances, and I know my wife loves me. I know that she cares for me. I know that she doesn't want to leave me. She promised me she wouldn't leave me. She, you know, she has really shown me that she still does care for me. But the situation is what's really causing all the problems. Because the situation is causing both of us to not act the right way that the other thinks the other one should. So, I, I made this video, I made this video just so that, you know, hopefully my wife, somebody could get this video to my wife and let her see it. She is, um, unfriended me on Facebook, you know, just, you know, if, if I have to say it, childish things, you know, I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that, that she's like hurt, but it's, what it's like is that she, her hurt, her being hurt is worse than me being hurt. But I'm going through hell over here by myself because I'm always by myself, 24 hours a day. My kids don't see me. My wife doesn't see me. My wife hasn't slept with me in my bed that I got here for at least two weeks, you know, and that's more, I won't go any farther than that. And it's because, you know, she just is thinking you know she's trying to figure out all this stuff and 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 these things are not not to make you think bad of my wife because it's not meant that way I don't I don't want you to get tw anything twisted or wrong I love my wife and I'm doing all this because I want her back I want to fix the problems and the main reason the only way that we're going to be able to fix our problems is to be able to sit down and talk with love and understanding and all of us not just me and my wife me and my kids um, my my daughter got married um, there's a lot of bad stuff going around about that that somehow it's my fault and then Christian my son Christian is moving out with my with my daughter and somehow that's my fault also but nobody will sit down with me and talk with me and tell me the absolute truth and the reason why they think that that's that way. They just say, it's your fault. It's just, you know, some people can have feelings that they're going to throw up, you know, but they don't throw up. They just had a feeling, you know, and it goes away. So if you say you, you know, you're using your feelings, then that's not really solid. You know, emotions play tricks on you. Emotions don't ever really help you in a real, in a situation where the truth needs to come out. It's it's facts. It's something that you've seen. It's something that you've 
directly seen and heard like uh, I, like for instance I say Christian move out get out of the house or my wife says let's just say my wife says uh, I have to leave or she has to leave so if I don't leave she's gonna leave and if and if she doesn't leave I'm gonna leave so it's it's like using the emotions that you're going through does not give you a good result sitting down and thinking praying about it and the only thing one thing I, I want to say right now one more thing is that the way that me and my wife are going to be able to fix everything that's going on is by sitting down together releasing whatever there is against each other or whatever's going on between me and my wife and my family or my my extended family or whatever all of us sitting down just let it go just let it go to god give it to god that's the only way that i've been able to survive here in my nephew's house for four months house where i lost my house everything and that actually is another time where everything started going even lower because we have no house my wife you know it's just everything that you could ever think of that my that would my, my wife would hate is happening right now and I'm not smiling because I'm happy I'm smiling because it's just it's it's so childish it's so it's so like like so easily fixable if you just look at the situation get on your knees give everything that you feel to God let God handle it for the Bible says take my yoke because my yoke is lighter you know I won't go into the whole verse I'm just saying the Bible is basically saying take whatever my load is because the load that I have is way lighter than the load that you have you know because a lot of people feel a lot of um, um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, pride they have a lot of pride inside them and they don't want to be able to show people that they're not able to do something by themselves or or they're not they're not um, um, able or capable enough to do stuff stuff on their own and and I just think that it's silly that it, that the stuff that I've been through, my wife's been through, my kids, it's been almost 20 years, and we have been through pure hell. And it just doesn't make sense for us to, to throw everything away. Everything that we've all worked for, just because of irreconcilable differences. So I'm going to leave you guys with that that I love my wife more than everything in this world and if she would just sit down and tell me what I need or, or we sit down and talk or whatever um, this, this will hopefully be my last video I don't want to have to you know make another video going against everything I just said here but I'm not trying to give you guys behind the scenes stuff I'm just trying to tell you that um, I love my wife and I'm sorry for whatever I've done and whatever I've said and words are just words and I know they hurt but you know if I can say one thing is that you know a lot of people in my life has hurt me by saying things but they're still in my life you know just because they hurt me or they say something that they don't mean because they're angry or they're upset, or they're, you know, grumpy, you know, I've been that way too before, you know, so it's like, everybody messes up, but what I'm trying to say is like, that whatever I've done, whatever it is, or whatever anybody has done to anybody, is like, what we're going through right now is not a way to lose a marriage, or lose my children, or lose everything because of some words that were said out of out of a broken heart that's all I want to say I love you Trini 
I I will always love you, baby. You have given me five beautiful kids, three three beautiful boys I had in the beginning, and I know you've went through a lot. I know you're going through some chemical imbalances right now. I know that you're going through just a lot in your brain, and I know it's hard, but I'm here, and I'll, I I won't leave. I'm going to keep fighting for you because I love you. And I don't want to lose you because you're everything to me. I have nobody else that I want to be with. I don't want to leave. You are everything to me. You know, I always call you, tu eres mi todo, mi amor. And yo no entiendo nada de este. No entiendo por qué tu eres así. Or mi hijos, or yo, haciendo videos para Facebook. I mean, yo nunca me vi de, yo, yo pienso en nosotros está así. Desde todas las cosas de pasado, de esa pas, en, eh, pasado. Yo no entiendo, yo no entiendo como este es, es la cosa de, de romper la huevo. Cosas antes yo puedo creer, eso rompe la, 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 la huevo, pero este no. Y tú sabes, yo no soy la persona, yo fui como las, los clubes de, de, de las desnudas, o el, el cantinas para tomar cervezas, o siempre con mis, mis amigos afuera en las noches, en las fines de semana. You know, yo siempre estar en esta casa, si no está en la casa, está afuera, y yo venir con dinero. No, yo sé, ahora en Arizona no está así, en Albuquerque está así, pero la, una cosa yo quiero preguntar, ¿qué, qué, qué, ¿qué pasó con el tiempo en 2011, en, en abril, agosto, jun, junio y julio? Porque en agosto 4 yo fui al hospital. Pero eso, eso todo el tiempo antes es como nosotros son, es como son niños. Es, es, es bien riquísimo. Y no, tú no entiendes cómo yo siento cuando yo pienso en ese tiempo, mi amor. La verdad. Te amo, mi amor. Yo nunca... Yo nunca deja solo, nunca. Yo estoy aquí, yo, yo dile, I told you my vows when I married you. I sent you a text of my vows yesterday that we said to each other before God. We made a contract before God that in through sickness and health, through bad and through good, through richer or for poor, Till death do us part. That I give my everything that I have to you. And we become one. And I think that both of us in certain ways have forgotten some of that stuff. But throughout this time of being alone so much. You have a lot of time to think. And and I think that's what we you need to do is just think. We've been through a lot, baby. I love you. Por favor, habla conmigo. Por favor. No habla mi mala cosas. Habla mi de, de su corazón. Vamos a arreglar todo este, por favor. Porque yo sé si puedo. Yo sé si puedo. Yo sé si puedo, mi amor. Pero tú necesito abrir su corazón. Yo perdono a ti todo tu pasaste conmigo. Todo, no quiero hablar nada de eso, pero yo perdono todo. De todo. De todo de malo. Tú sabes que yo estaba hablando. Vamos a hacer cosas frescas. De este día para adelante. Vamos a hacer por nosotros hijos, Ana y Mónica Jr. Y vamos a hacer las cosas bien. Vámonos, mi amor. 
si tú puedes, si se puede, si se puede, si se puede, por favor, mi amor. Y mi familia está escuchando, mirando este, um, perdóname. Yo no sé qué voy a hacer. Yo no sé cómo, cómo puedo hablar. Nada más, perdóname, porque yo probé todo yo, yo puedo, todos los días. Y yo soy incorrecto. Háblame por teléfono, venir. Háblame cara a cara. No háblame en un posting de Facebook o or, or, or un texto o or algo así. Háblame, ven. Siéntate, siéntate conmigo, vamos a hablar, vamos al parque, vamos a caminar. Habla conmigo si, si tienes algo conmigo. Porque yo no quiero ningún problema con nadie. Tú sabes cómo la persona yo soy. Pero en este momento, en este momento es bien difícil. Es, es bien difícil. Y yo sé... Cuando el, el diablo mira este problema, nosotros, Azar, solo, él venir y él está haciendo cosas también. Para, you know, to twist stuff around, twist words, twist what I'm saying, um, misunderstandings, uh, mis, misinterpretations. Yo no estoy hablando de esas palabras por excusas. Es, es como... Es como una persona puede hablar algo, pero otra persona no escucha que la otra, la otra persona está hablando. Ella escucha algo diferente. Y eso es el problema. Yo quiero todos, perdónenme, por favor, en el nombre de Jesús. Dios, yo, yo, yo soy gracias por todo. Yo, yo soy gracias de, de todo tú me das, mi, mi, mi esposa, mis hijos, mi vida, mi comida, la electricidad, la, la, la casa, todo. Padre, yo, yo quiero tú estar dentro de este matrimonio, esta familia, nosotros, mi, 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 mi esposa, mis niños, todo, mi amor. Padre, mi amor. Yo quiero, tú sabes, yo quiero Dios en nosotros, vida en la media. Vamos a probar, vamos, por favor. Vámonos, vamos a probar todo lo necesario usar con Dios en, en la media. Y vamos a usar porque el, el tiempo está corto ahora. Y tú sabes los problemas con mi corazón, con mis pulmones. Uh, y las otras cosas también y tengo miedo porque necesito usar los las tratamientos otra vez para sus papeles tengo miedo necesito algo atrás a mí atrás para mi ayuda para mi orar por mí porque yo tengo problemas y no tengo nada nada más de Jesús Gracias Jesús, tú estás en mi vida por todo ese tiempo, porque sin, sin usted yo, yo no sé qué voy a hacer. Y yo sabe que está malo. Y yo no, nunca he nada con, con mis hijos malos. Yo estaba hablando conmigo. O sea, no quiero vivir sin mi esposa. No quiero vivir sin, sin, mi, sin mi Trinidad. La verdad. No, no puedo vivir, no quiero vivir, no quiero vivir. Esta es mi todo, tú eres mi todo, mi amor. Tú sabes eso, y nosotros para arreglar este. Por favor, abre su corazón. Por favor, yo no quiero morir solo. Yo no quiero morir solo, por favor. Perdóname. Please.